Hi there, welcome back to First Chapter. So um, in case you missed the first video, First Chapter is about bringing authors and readers together. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to read the first chapter of one of my books, which happens to be Finding Famous. Um, anyway, so I'm just gonna get to it and we'll just see if you enjoy it. So Finding Famous is about a girl who follows her mother's path to where her mother found her. And it's a fun, magical realism book. Anyway, um, so here's the first chapter. Chapter one, The Great Sadness. Yes, my name is famous, she answered for the thousandth time. Her mother always said she would be, famous that is. She knew it from her day, from the day she found her. Believing she had some type of psychic ability, she would tell famous that it was just a matter of time. But famous, she was not. In fact, nothing remotely famous had ever happened in her life. She lived in a small fishing village a couple hours north of New York City, a small town with a population of roughly 500. Life there to her was normal, boring, and mundane. But it was her normal. Wake up, get dressed, and go to work. Her days off were much like her days at work, which were consisting of reading and writing a book. Famous work for the local library where she had worked since she was 15 years old. It was actually the only job she'd ever had. It started out as a credit for high school, then volunteering after school and summers until she was hired on as a paid summer help. Finally, after high school, she was hired on full time. She imagined she would work there forever. Her mother had been the dreamer, the one who had all the hopes for her future. Famous loved the library. She lived through the pages of other people's stories. She began reading every title, no matter what it was. She read poetry, cooking, romance, even auto mechanics. The list was endless. She read nearly every book in the young adult section. Sometimes her imagination would run wild like she was on an adventure right along with the characters. Reading was her first passion, but writing was a close second. Writing a novel every couple of months, she never intended to get published. Her mother used to say, famous, it's your destiny. One day you'll be famous. A famous author on the bestsellers list. Famous would simply say, I don't write to be famous. She dreamt of finding love under the moonlight sky, climbing through the rainforest, or hiding in an ice cave like stories her mother would tell. Famous once would ask, how could she have possibly thought of all these crazy stories? Her mother simply said, it took me many great adventures to find you famous. One day you will take such an adventure. But she said nothing more on the subject until near it neared her death. Famous, she said, you must follow my adventures. The journey I took to find you famous. You must take this journey. It is waiting for you. Go to the house. It's there. I've left you the path to follow. She took a deep breath. I love you famous. Her final words, and she was gone. Famous was heartbroken, so much so that she couldn't think of what her mother was saying to her. Her mother died in the summer after her 21st birthday. Famous called it her time of great sadness. Her mother had always been like magic to Famous. You could see her, but you couldn't explain her, and she would just entrance you. Famous often thought of her mother. She missed her more than ever, but felt blessed for the memory she had had with the woman who she believed was the most amazing and mystical person in the entire world that ever existed. Each novel Famous had written had come from the stories her mother had told throughout the years of her life. Nearly seven years had passed and she had still not thought of what her mother said on her deathbed. One night in a dream, she heard her mother's dying words. I have left you the path to follow. Her mother had come several times in her dreams before, but in this particular dream, she spoke with such urgency. Famous woke, feeling certain that her mother was there with her. It was her fortune Famous was able to continue to live in the house. She had always thought that the house was charming, more like a cottage than a house, decorated with photos of her mother before and after finding Famous. There were books on the shelves and a few candles, but that was it, charming and quaint. There was a studio apartment above the garage that had a kitchenette and a bathroom. They had rented it out over the years, which is how famous figured 
her mother had paid the note off years before. It was also how Famous was paying the taxes every year since. The cottage had been her saving grace. Her mother had been up in the loft where she could peer down into the living room. Her mother's room had a door behind the base of the stairs. She couldn't bear to go into her mother's room, but she was certain that is where her mother must have left the path that she spoke of. After only a couple of months had passed, Famous went to her mother's room. She could smell her mother's perfume, sweet heavenly scent, like she was still there. Famous lied on her bed and cried. She left the room and closed the door and had not opened it since. Exactly seven years after her death, Famous had finally decided it was time. She opened the door very slowly. Looking in, she could visualize her mother laughing and saying, I have another story, Famous. Come sit on the bed with me. Those were the best times in her life, thinking how disappointed she might be that she had done nothing in the past seven years, a prison, prison term sentence in some countries. It was dark, so Famous pulled open the curtains. The room was filled with dust and cobwebs. It was time, actually beyond time, to fill this room with life again. Maybe she could find a roommate. It was hard to picture anyone else living in this space besides her mother. It was and would always be her mother's room. The door creaked as she opened the closet. She saw her clothes and could picture her in every item as she removed them from the hangers. The room wasn't as sad as it had been before. Carefully, she packed the clothes in boxes, except those she kept chose to keep. The ones that reminded her the most, or the ones that Famous thought she might wear. The shoes were too large for Famous, so she packed them all away, thinking a shelter would be a nice place to take them and may help someone. Her mother would be happy that her things were doing some good rather than not being used. There wasn't a lot there, just a few boxes in the top of the closet. Surely she wasn't missing something. Pulling down the first box and examining the contents, some train tickets, a map, a necklace piece of some kind, and a napkin from some place in Ireland. Souvenirs, she guessed. A bunch of other miscellaneous items. The second, a box of her journals. She opened several, looking at the dates, finding the one for the year she must have begun her journey to finding famous, and she began to read. She came to me in a dream, famous, a baby looking for a mother. The next day I began my quest for finding famous. There was a small piece of paper like a sticky note if you're reading this famous, then I am gone. Stop reading and pack your bags. It's time for your adventure to begin. There are clues in the box next to the box of journals. She stared at the journal, not knowing what to do. This was just like her famous thought. Drop everything and go now. She couldn't possibly pack her bags and leave tomorrow the way her mother had all those years before. Yet, if she continued to read, it was showing such disrespect to the memory of her mother. Her mother would have... No, have to know that for famous, it would be necessary to get things in order. That would not that would not be the way her mother would think, though. Famous didn't know what to pack. She didn't dare read ahead in the journal. Famous sat at the edge of the bed, staring at the page in the journal, and she had no idea what would happen next. The journal snapped closed, and it startled her. She was certain she had imagined the whole thing. The same little note was sitting on top. She read it over and over again. Logic told Famous to read on in the journal, but she would not even attempt to open it. Unlike her mother, she was scared to just pack her bags and run out the door. This was the fear she would soon have to overcome. Running to the loft, she began to pull out clothes, wondering what to take. How much should she take? If only her mother had said more than just pack a bag, as if she would know what she needed for a journey. Famous was thinking, where am I going? She knew her mother well enough to know that she would say, pack only what you can easily carry. She would often say some of the burdens and some of the stress. Famous was certain that her mother had learned this freedom from her mother. She could only imagine. But Famous knew her mother's name was as odd as her own, Dara Alegria, roughly meaning give joy in Spanish. Although Famous didn't remember her grandmother, she had imagined her many times from the stories her mother had told. Hastily, she packed a bag, 
thinking it would just have to make do, sending an email off to the library and saying that she was taking some time off to do some traveling and she was sincerely sorry it was last minute. Okay, well, that was my first chapter of Famous Destiny. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna read a first chapter from various books and I will link the book below. That way, if you choose to pick it up. And um, if you're an author that wants me to read a first chapter of your book, or if you'd like to guest on and send me a video of you reading your first chapter, I'll be happy to post it as long again as it is pretty PG. I don't want to have a lot of vulgarity or sex or gore <laughs> on my um on my page um, or on my channel sorry anyway so i hope you enjoyed my first chapter and you have an awesome day this is alexis anique thank you for joining me